For the gastrointestinal examination, the patient should lie on one low pillow. This helps relax the abdominal muscles. For the examination of the abdomen itself, the patient should be exposed from the mid-chest to the symphysis pubis. The general inspection is a chance to look for wasting or cachexia, jaundice and restlessness or drowsiness that may indicate hepatic encephalopathy. The examination in detail begins with the hands. The nails are inspected for clubbing and whitening, leukonychia, which are characteristic of chronic liver disease. The palms are inspected for reddening, erythema, and contractures and thickening of the flexor tendons, Dupuytren's contractures. The patient is asked to extend the hands at the wrists and to maintain that position for 30 seconds. Inability to maintain this position leads to a flapping tremor called an hepatic flap, which is a sign of hepatic encephalopathy. The examiner now inspects the arms for bruises and scratch marks and the upper arms for spider nevi. Examination now moves on to the face. Look for jaundice, especially in the sclerae, and for the conjunctival pallor of anemia. The examiner looks carefully at the mouth for numerous possible abnormalities, including pigmentation and telangiectasia. Smell the patient's breath to assess the presence of the sweet smell of fetal hepaticus. Just shrug your shoulders up a little bit and now relax them down. Just relax, that's great. The examiner now feels for enlargement of the cervical and supraclavicular lymph nodes. This may be the time to assess the auxiliary lymph nodes. Swing your legs around this way, please. Swing your legs over the side of the bed. Okay, and just relax your arm nice and heavy in mind. Let me take the weight. That's it, nice and relaxed. Nice and heavy on the side again, that's great. That's great. Now inspect the chest for breast enlargement and loss of body hair in men. Look for spider nevi. The abdominal examination begins with a careful inspection. Just want you to take a couple of deep breaths in and out for me. Abdominal masses and distension may be best seen from the side. Masses such as an enlarged liver may be seen to move as the patient breathes in and out. Examiner looks from above for abdominal scars, bruises, abnormal pigmentation and visible peristalsis. Palpation is performed after the patient has been asked if there are any tender areas. Is it sore anywhere in your tummy? Okay. It should begin superficially and be performed in each region of the abdomen. After deeper palpation in each quadrant for masses and tenderness, the liver edge is sought under the costal margin. Now the patient begins from the right lower quadrant using the radial side of the examiner's right hand. Just take some deep breaths in and out for me. The 
percussion is used to estimate the liver span. The spleen is assessed in the same way on the other side. The examiner then attempts to blot the kidneys. One hand is placed in each lumbar region in turn and the other under the patient's side. The lower fingers flick upwards briskly while the other hand waits for the kidney to float upwards. Okay. Now I'd like you to roll onto your side towards me. If the, spleen is not if the spleen is not palpable when the patient is lying flat, the examiner rolls him or her to the right and tries again. Listen with the stethoscope for normal, reduced or increased bowel sounds over the liver for a hum and over the renal arteries for breweries. The abdominal examination is not complete without examination of the inguinal lymph nodes and for hernias. It's going to fill into your groin here, for any glands. Now uncover the legs to look for bruises, edema, and if suspected, signs of alcoholic peripheral neuropathy. Examination should finish with a rectal examination and if indicated, a cardiovascular assessment.